Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a special live edition of Yard Work, the video blog where we dig into mass incarceration. My name is Mandy Goheen, and I am the Director of Prison Ministry here at the Church of the Larger Fellowship, as well as Director of the Worthy Now Network. And I am joined with my co-hosts today, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Rodney Limery, and I am really honored and blessed to be the learning fellow uh, assigned to mostly the prison ministry uh, with Mandy and loving every minute of it. All right. Well, we wanted to come to you live during Giving Tuesday because we're focusing on the position that Rodney's filling right now. And so we have a couple questions that we've put together for you all. Um, that we're going to answer, but we'd love for you to post your questions and they'll get communicated to us and we can answer them live. So I'm going to let Rodney get us started and take it away. Great. So I, th I think we wanted to take the opportunity to maybe talk a bit about how both of us feel the prison ministry that we are doing with the Church of the Larger Fellowship how it's important to either helping us uh, live into our UU values or honor those values in particular ways. Would you like to take a, a stab at that one? Sure. First of all, I feel like no matter what I can do at the Church of the Larger Fellowship, my job is really to direct the programming and to make sure that our members who are incarcerated, um, nearly 900, all get the programming that they need. And why that's meaningful to me is because of the letters I received back. And letters thanking me for really simple things like calling someone by their name or their chosen name, for example, or their chosen pronouns. But I think the thing that inspires me the very most and the thing that connects me to our first principle and my UU values the very most is the evangelism that's happening behind prison walls that so many UUs don't know about. And um, a little history, we were um, contacted 50 years ago by somebody living in San Quentin and asked to join the CLF, and they were our very first member joining us from prison. So in the past 50 years, we've gone from one person that was just a member to developing a program, just, as a, just to try it out, to this tremendous amount of growth. And some of you out there have given us names of folks living in incarceration, but just the vast majority of people who join the CLF and join our prison ministry program have heard it from someone else who's a Unitarian Universalist in prison, which is amazing if you think about a church that's grown in 50 years to 900. I think that's a really big testament, not to us and our work necessarily. Our work enables it to happen, but to our leaders who are behind prison walls who are sharing the good news of Unitarian Universalism. And that's where I really draw my energy and inspiration from, from others sharing the good news that, you know, there's a faith out there that believes that they're worthy of love and justice today, not by being saved, not by being, not by repentance, not by anything that that we love you where you are right now does that mean there's no boundaries there are and we could talk about that later but what it means is someone is reading quest magazine to their cellmate or someone is telling them somebody living in prison who might be transgender that there's a place of religious freedom for them who believes in their personal and faith development, regardless of how they've been oppressed within the system or with or outside its walls. So uh, what about you, Rodney? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think uh, 
I think we're very similar in, in, in our motivations behind prison ministry. Uh, for me, it is a practical way to live out my UU values. You know, if I really do believe in the inherent worth and dignity of every person, then that means all people, people who have made mistakes that are public and uh, are in some ways um, atoning for those mistakes in in the system. Um, That also includes the people that, because of their position in life and privilege, are probably making the very same mistakes and never get caught or have to atone for that mistake or, or behavior. Um, but I think you, you kind of touched on it. For me, it is, this work has been so pivotal in helping me delineate between behavior and personhood. So every person is inherently worthy. We are, our, our, we are all part of that big divine network that connects us all. So for me, it's that first and seventh principle tied together. That and I know that the seventh principle is usually seen in an ecological way, but I like to think of it more in a metaphysical way. Like we are all interconnected in ways that our minds will not ever comprehend. So, you know, I can't be truly free until everyone is truly free. And, you know, that's a often quoted quote, but I, I think it rings true. And it, it, our, our Unitarian Universalist faith does have an amazing gospel, an amazing piece of good news. And I'm so surprised every day to see how that information is spread within the, the prison community to various people. Um, and it, it just gives me hope that if we as Unitarian Universalist practitioners could learn to actually go into those environments as well, and it, maybe our message could grow even bigger and, you know, touch more people and help, help their lives. Yeah, that's, that's how I feel about that. <laughs> you for your insight um i so do you have any other questions that we know of rodney or was there anything else we were going to talk about practical one um could you tell us a little bit more just about the current structure of the prison ministry team at the clf sure well one of the things that surprises most people is there is no full-time person in the prison ministry at this time. I work part-time, uh, 20 hours a week, which explains why sometimes it's hard to get a hold of me. And then Rodney, you also, as the learning fellow, work 20 hours a week. We work um, in partnership a lot, but what's phenomenal about our team of Rodney and I, just this piece of the team is that we are very complementary as far as our skill sets go. Like Rodney's great at tech and I really am not. And then Hannah helps us, Hannah Eller Isaac sends out all the classwork and the, um, the reading packet materials, we have a partnership with Skinner House, which we are able to send books to folks in prison in the form of letters. And Hannah organizes all of that. And Hannah really drives a lot of the, the um, fundraising, like the Faithify and Days Like Today, Giving Tuesday. Um, so then there's Beth. Beth Murray, who is in our Boston office, and Beth is just amazing. She sends all the inquiry packets to people who are interested in our faith from prison. She forwards all the um, um, pen pal letters that go back and forth. She does that, and she fields, she does so much ministry in two ways. First, by fielding things for Rodney and I so that we don't have to answer every question. 
but I think the thing that's most critical that she does and goes most unnoticed is just keeping track of people. The prison industrial complex moves people around so much and Beth is just on it. She's really great at keeping track of where people are. Um, yeah, so that's our staff. We also work with uh, Reverend Meg Riley, of course, and our executive director, Jody Malloy, and their great supports to us. And really, when I started the prison ministry four and a half years ago, it was really its own little silo in the CLF, this separate thing that we did. And um, I really have seen it grow into being something that's important to the whole team. And that includes Lori Stone Starkowski and, and anyone who touches the prison ministry. Um, Marga Lee will get involved, our other learning fellow and our other learning fellow Jess has, who works on The View. So really, to be honest, and definitely um, Judy in our, our finance department, like everybody at the CLF, our board touches the prison ministry in some way and is touched by it as well. And I know, I know, Mandy, I think you, you feel this way as well. I think the greater UUA, I mean, the work that the prison ministry is doing is evangelical in its nature. And it's just a, an incredible opportunity for us to get out there, be a little more public about our message and really try and send some good news away to people who don't often get it. Um, and possibly, who knows, with other partnerships that we might be working on within the UUA, we might be able to, to do it to people beyond the prison walls, um, getting congregations more involved in the, in the work that we're doing. And I know that kind of segues into the importance, one of the other questions we had, which was the importance of, of volunteer support. I wish um, there were words, this is a month of gratitude, right? And I wish that there were words strong enough for my gratitude for our letter writing team. We have over 300 matches of free world UUs and religious liberals um, who write our members who are incarcerated. Um, not all of them, but 300 of them as well. There's letters go back and forth. And that number fluctuates as we make matches and don't. Um, we just had a really difficult matching cycle as far as pen pals go. And we have been working really hard this time to get matches and to reformulate how we do it. Um, the folks that write our members who are incarcerated are really the people with their finger on the pulse of the pastoral care issues that someone might face. And what's amazing to me is how many times that those of us on the outside who are writing letters are ministered to by our fellow UUs who are incarcerated. It's really inspiring. And Do you have maybe an example, a practical example, Mandy, of maybe a powerful thing that you've heard from one of our members in the past? Well, I have a very favorite story. So my very favorite story is a gentleman who was a member for 10 years was walking out of the prison gates and he was met there by his pen pal and his brother. And he was in Texas and they drove him from Texas to Florida. And in Florida, uh, he joined his local UU congregation and began volunteering. And the pen pal relationship continued and, and they really both talk about how much they do for each other, which is really neat. And when it came time for our member who was no longer incarcerated to open a small business, it was his pen pal who actually gave him the micro loan to buy the tools of his trade. So that's like, my favorite story and my second favorite story is we had a really tough pen pal 
somebody who was really hard to write to. And I would have quit on them so very long ago. But this pen pal stuck with, this free world pen pal stuck with this person through constant boundary pushing and constant coming back into covenant and community because we do have rules and it was just constant. And what was so beautiful about the whole thing is like, he finally, the pen pal who was incarcerated, finally had had enough of the boundaries and he quit the relationship, which was really funny. But um, just the commitment to see the inherent worth and dignity in someone who is so difficult to deal with and was really pushing my patience and to see that Unitarian Universalist really go beyond that and stick with this person and just repeat over and over again I know you can do that you know just encouraging and here's your boundaries you can't do this anymore but here is what we can do and so um was really inspired by that. But every single time I get to talk to somebody who's in a letter writing partnership, I hear stories about how the free world person was going through a hard time and their pen pal in prison was there for them in a different kind of way. Mm -hmm. And a more, you know, letter writing's pretty intimate. So what we write, um, it's just a different kind of exchange and some folks love it because it's old fashioned and you know, it's that pen and paper experience and that receiving correspondence that's important to them. But I kind of went off on a tangent. So um, anyway, those are a couple stories about pen pals. Um, there's tons more and um, but people, people could make their own stories if they would sign up on Worthy Now website to be a pen pal. Yeah, and you know, I, I said I wasn't going to talk about this, but I am. We desperately need pen pals who are willing to write people who have been put or labeled as sex offenders. And I'm just going to be really honest about that because we have this big pool of folks waiting for someone to write them. And until we step out of our comfort zone, maybe a little bit and address that, I don't know what we're going to do to get our pen pals matched. Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned that this was a difficult matching period. We have some really great matches too that happened, but, um, I just really need folks to step up and and I understand that sexual offenses trigger trauma for some people and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just folks who are maybe a little uncomfortable with it giving it a chance and stepping into that first principle a little in a little different way and and also to know that the staff at the CLF is there to support them as they do that. Yeah, I think that for me as a learning fellow was one of the very first things that I recognized so quickly was how readily you and, and Beth, honestly, will step in and uh, assist if there's a difficult situation or a difficult line of communication. Um, definitely you're not alone if you sign up to be a, a pen pal. Uh, there's a massive amount of support, even though we're all part-time employees for the prison ministry, we hobble together incredible support for one another. And do you want to talk about one of those things that's going on right now that, um, you're kind of heading up? Oh yeah. Um, Right. We are doing for support, supporting of one another, the circles of support, which are our small group ministry uh, meetings that all happen on Zoom. And it's just a place for us to come together. Mine are set up as more worship style. So it's a small group worship celebration, let's call it, um, where we just take an opportunity to think about 
the work that we're all doing, the ministry that everyone's called to do in prison. And, you know, what does it mean to us and how have we been affected by it? It's, it's a way to get sustaining support spiritually uh, for that work ahead. Like one of the things that goes unrecognized when working with incarcerated populations is that there is some secondary trauma and some processing that goes along with that. And I think that's why the covenant group is so important. And especially like to be around your people, like if you're around other people that are writing letters and being able to compare um, ideas and grief and joys um, is a really important aspect. And I hope that that, I've tried a few times to get that off the ground. I really hope that it's sticking this time. So we need all y'all to sign up if you haven't for our next go round. And I'd really like to keep these covenant groups going to support us on the outside who are doing the work. And Mandy, I know it's the reason that we went live is because it's Giving Tuesday. So what are three ways that we may better support the prison ministry program at the Church of the Larger Fellowship? Well, in this season of, of giving and year end, we have something called three ways to give. And so simply the first way to give is our Christmas card collection. So we send at least this year, at least two Christmas cards to each of our members who are incarcerated or holiday cards or whatever you like. There's some rules around that. Like it can only be in a white envelope. We, uh, no glitter, no fancy cards, very plain cards and white envelopes. And we collect those usually starting in November. And then we send them off so that they have a holiday greeting from a Unitarian Universalist. So that's really, really fun. And then the next way is stamps. And you are welcome to donate stamps to us. As a matter of fact, I got through most of last year on the stamps that you all donated for three ways to give. So I wanna thank you for that. And then finally is your financial support. Um, we have folks joining who, I just wanna say that the prison ministry is, is a big part of the um, overall cost for the CLF every year. And one of the reasons why we're expensive is because folks who join us that are incarcerated get more programming than is offered honestly to some of you all in the outside world. And the cost of the programming is something that they can't afford. It's prohibitive. It's about $150 per person per year. And we have a match, so that's super exciting. But we really need your help today. And we're about a quarter of the way there last time I heard. So, yeah. um, and it's a $10,000 match. So oh, it's a $10,000 match. Oh, yeah. wow. So come on, let's get, and I still haven't given yet. And I'm going to do that right after, um, this, but yeah, so there's lots of ways to give and there's lots of ways to volunteer too. Um, other than being a letter, letter writer, like we have folks that come, to the spots where we send the Christmas cards off from and address those cards. I have someone, I live in Montgomery, Alabama, not in Boston, and I have um, someone who comes to my house almost once a week and helps me with the prison ministry. So our volunteers are just critical to what we do. And your generosity, not, not yours, Rodney, but the people out there, your generosity is what makes this possible and makes this ministry possible. And it is just fabulous. I mean, just think about the evangelism that's going on. Like I go out on the street and somebody asks me what Unitarian Universalist means and I want to just mumble something, you know, here. And, but like these folks are shouting from the rafters and, you know, and like saying that there's a place for people. So it's just really cool. Yeah, definitely. Did we have any other questions? I am looking. I don't believe so. 
I think we got through all of our questions. Yeah. Well, this has been so fun. And I want to thank you all so much for watching this and joining us. And it's Giving Tuesday. And we need your help. We need to hit that match. So please do what you can. Every dollar counts as double. Yeah. And thanks for joining us at Yard Work. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.